Hello, everyone. Welcome to GSPC Overflow Ministry Sunday Worship. Let's go ahead and get our heart and focus our mind to worship God. Please join me in prayer. Let us hold fast to confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as it is that habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Amen. Dear Father God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for giving up your heavenly glory and come down to love us and save us. For that love, we are here to express our love and honor and, and worship to you. Please fill our heart with your Holy Spirit so that we can become a true worshiper who worships you in spirit and truth. It is our, this is our opportunity. This is our time to express our love to you. Therefore, we humbly bow, bow down and we worship you. Father God, we understand that day is drawing near. When that day comes, you're going to wipe away all our tears from our face and you're going to embrace us. Help us focus our eyes and mind to the goal, to the end day, and help us be faithful in our race to live a life according to your will. Please uh, accept our worship, and we ask that your name be glorified through everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue with praise. Okay, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. If you could uh, please join us now in a uh, time of praise. Come and stand before your maker, full of wonder, full of fear. Come be all his power and glory, yet with confidence draw near. For the water walls the heavens and commands the stars above. Is the God who bends to bless us with an unrelenting love. Be with sacrificial blood, bringing reconciliation to a world that longs to know the affections of a father who will never let them go. Jesus carried up the hill. 
He has walked this path before us. He is walking with us still. Turning tragedy to triumph, turning agony to praise. There is blessing in the battle, so take heart and stand amazed. Rejoice when you cry to Him. Praise the Lord, 
is new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Today's scripture comes from Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, the produce of the olive field and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the tears, he makes me tread on my high places to the choir master with string instruments. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, David. Let's pray, guys. Father God, this is the time we open our ears and mind to listen to your word. We confess that your word have a power to change our life. Father God, we have a big hole in our heart and nothing can fill this hole. Only your word can fill us. Therefore, please today, send your word directly into our heart and fill us. We confess that grass withers, flower fade, but your word will stand forever. We want to hold on to your precious word. Please give us understanding and help us live according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. We're currently in a three-part series. Uh, we've been talking about the uh, topic of suffering. Last week, we talked about the topic, how to respond to life crisis. And we talked about how worship is an answer to our life crisis. Worship has a power to save us. Worship has power to give us strength. Worship has power to realize the, the solution to our problem. So always remember this truth whenever you're going through a life difficult time, um, set aside everything, put down everything and begin worshiping God. And we talked about how worship doesn't need to be complicated. Just praise God, read the Bible and pray, and God is going to accept your worship. We're going to look into a age old question, which is, why doesn't good God stop all evil? We talked about this uh, question briefly last week. Why doesn't God stop evil? This is very important question indeed, because according to the Bible, God is someone who is all knowing. And according to the Bible, God is somebody who have all loving, who is all loving. And also he is all holy and he is sin. And finally, according to our own Bible, God is all powerful. So when you break this down, all knowing means that God knows someone who's suffering because he has all knowledge. And all living means that God cares for those who suffer. And because he's holy, God wants to stop all evil. He hates sin. He hates evil. And lastly, if God is all powerful, God is able to stop all evil. And here comes a question. If biblical God is true, if this is all true, and why is there so much evil and suffering in the world? Um, atheists claim that this is the evidence that God doesn't exist. Good and loving God wouldn't allow so much evil. But when we look around the world, there's so much evil and suffering. Therefore, they claim, atheists claim that God does not exist. This argument sounds convincing and reasonable on surface. And this is the number one reason why people don't believe God. Another thing is that the question why God doesn't stop evil 
this isn't just a philosophical question. It's not just for our you know, mind exercise. For so many people, this is a personal question. And you might have already asked this question yourself too, in some form of, uh, or other, uh, other. Some of you might be asking this question now. When there is a life crisis, there are too big for you to handle. You're going to cry out to God, God, why I'm so disappointed. God, I'm, I'm in so much pain. God, my heart is broken. God, I am desperate. Why is this happening to me? Why did you allow this thing to happen in my life? Why is there so much suffering in my life? So once again, this question can be very personal. So why won't God stop all evil? You know, this question is so significant throughout all human history. Even one of the Bible author asked this very question. So when you read Habakkuk, you can find this very question on uh, the very first chapter. It read, Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry it to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquities? And why do you idly look at wrong? Destructions and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the lies paralyze and justice never go forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice go, goes forth perverted. So Habakkuk is basically saying, God, why is there so much evil? Why does evil men prevail while righteous men suffer? How long shall I cry? How long shall I wait? You know, 2,600 years ago, he wrote this. The Old Testament prophet is asking this same question. And many people are asking this question even today. So now, let me tell you the biblical answer to this question. Like I told you last week, there are perfectly logical explanations. But you might need to you know, uh, focus your brain a little bit more than usual. So please put on your thinking cap and, and concentrate. So first point is everything that's uh, said about God in the Bible is true. This is all true. God is all knowing. God is all loving. He's all holy. He's all powerful. So since God is all powerful, it is possible for God to stop all evil in the world. This is, this is possible. God can instantly wipe out all evil activities, such as death, lying, abuse, rape, and murder. God can stop it all. Therefore, God can end all pain and suffering as a result. In other words, God can create a universe where there is no evil, no evil at all. That is possible. So this could be a, a new universe where there is no suffering, no evil whatsoever. But God choose not to create this kind of universe. Why? In order to explain this, let me stop for a minute and ask you a question. What is the most important virtue? What is the greatest good in terms of virtue? What is the greatest concept in the whole world? Is it something like you know justice or humility or kindness? What do you guys think? According to God, the most important uh, virtue is love. And I think most of you, if not all, would agree. Love is the greatest virtue. Love is the most important thing in, in our life. Love is the most beautiful thing out there. Love between families, love, be love from your parents, love between friends. Love between the neighbors, love between man and woman. Love is the most viable and beautiful thing in the universe. And in order for there to be love, what we need is an uh, agent. So we, we're going to need a subject. You, know, you need somebody to love. And then it requires that subject, that agent, to have a free will. So what is free will? Free will is the ability that you could choose. You could either choose to love other people well, you have option not to, not to love. You have option to reject. To help you better understand, let me go back to the first universe where there is no evil. So this person have freely choose to uh, uh, love others. 
So let's go back to the first universe where there's no, no evil, where there's no uh, wrongdoing. So everyone can only love each other, you know, in this universe. They, are, they can only love God. They have no other choice. They cannot even think of the possibility that they're going to hate someone or hate God. So, um, but if you are said, said to only accept and love someone, can you really call that a love? Is that, is that a really a love? Because when you think about it, you know, if you're just programmed to, to love, that's not love. That's just a setup. That's just a program. You're like a computer program or robot to love. So in order for there to be love, um, there must be a free choice. There must be a free choice to reject or, or love because love by definition must be freely given. You cannot force somebody to love you. But for God, love wasn't just a concept. It wasn't just a, the idea. He had a specific person in mind when you think of the word love. And that person is you. He th thinks of you when, he, when God thinks of the word love. You see, when God created the heavens and the earth, he created everything out of the love for human. That is why when God, God created human, he created us in, into his own image and give us everything. He, he put in charge us to take care of everything on earth. So earth was a present to man. Even before our creation, God decided to love us. And God wanted this love relation to be genuine. He could have created a universe where man, you and I, are programmed only to love him. But that's not true love. That's just program. So reason why marriage is so beautiful is because when you marry someone, you are making a decision to only love that person as your husband and wife forever. You know, when I, when I got married, no one was forcing me to love, uh, love my wife. I could have choose, chosen other uh, women to, to love, but I have freely decided to only love my wife uh, for the rest of my life. And same goes, thing goes for my wife as well. Therefore, when two people, even though they, they have power to decide otherwise, when, when they freely chose to love each other, that is a genuine love. And God wanted this genuine relationship, the genuine love uh, between us. God didn't want some robot to, you know, just program to love, love him. But God wanted uh, the free creature to freely decide to love him. But here comes a price. When the creature have free will, when the free, free creature have option to choose, some person's going to choose to love God and love others. But guess what? Other people is going to choose to reject God. And they're going to choose to hate. And this is what exactly happened in, in the Garden of Eden. Nevertheless, God has chosen this universe so that he can love. You know, Garden of Eden, this is what happened. Adam and Eve decided to reject God. It wasn't a simple story of not listening to God. There was an end. It was actually a betrayal. They have uh, decided... Uh, willfully decided to reject God and become their own God. And God, I'm going to reject you as my God. I'm going to be my own God. I'm going to decide what, what's right and wrong. I'm going to uh, do everything to my, my own terms. That's what happened in Garden of Eden. And when that happened, when Adam and Eve decided to disobey God and reject God, the sin uh, came into the world. And along with the sin, all the extra baggage, such as evil, curses, sickness, pain, and suffering has entered into the world. Now, world is filled with sin, and God still have, have to allow us to have free will so that we can have true loving relationship with God. But more and more, people, choose, uh, people uh, freely choose to do more evil. People choose to lie and steal. People choose to hate and abuse others. Therefore, all kinds of pain and suffering are in the world. People started to freely choose to abuse their body and, and environment around them. So all kinds of sickness and illness, diseases came into the world as well. So all the illness, suffering and sickness, pain is a result of somebody freely choosing
to do something wrong, to have choosing something evil. So it goes all the way back to Adam. So every pain and suffering is a result of our own choices. But you might say, wait, Pastor Christian, let me stop you here. What about the natural disaster like famine? You know, little children are dying in places like Africa because they have nothing to eat. The little children have done nothing wrong. They haven't chosen you evil. They, they were just born into it. Why are they dying and suffering? You guys, uh, I remember reading a book from a person who worked for an NGO. NGO is a non-government organization where they help out, you know, uh, people in need. They go to places like Africa and help uh, feed the hungry, hungry people and so forth. And I remember reading his book and almost everywhere, uh, this is what he said, almost everywhere he visited, you know, many villages where people are, um, you know, starving and dying from hunger. If you just travel a few miles away, you can always find a village where there's a tons of food stored in their uh, greenery or supermarket to enough food to feed the two village. So you see, when people are dying from, uh, this is what he wrote, even in case of famine or extreme poverty and people dying from hunger, it's not a natural disaster. This is a man-made disaster. In the whole world, there is a plenty of and enough food to feed the entire population of the earth. But yet, in some part of the world, people are still dying from hunger. So somewhere along the line, there is always someone who have chosen to do evil than good. Then what about the true natural disaster, such as tsunami or earthquake or hurricane? What about those kind? You know, we haven't done anything to that. But the Bible said that even the natural disaster is a result of our sin. You know, you see when Adam and Eve reject God, the earth was cursed as a result. So ultimately, those natural disasters are a result from our sin as well. So all the pains and suffering and injustice and natural disaster are a result from our own uh, rejection of God, a uh, result of our own sin. And yes, God knew this is going to happen since he's all knowing. But God said, for love, this is worth it. God said, yes, I know that you are going to reject me and betray me. But because this is the only way that we can have a genuine loving relationship, it was worth it. And knowing that we're going to brought so much pain and suffering to ourselves, what did God done? to save us. He gave up everything for himself to save us. He gave up his glory. He gave up his power. He gave up his place in heaven and decided to came down to earth and live as we live, suffer as we suffer. And he took all our sin and died on the cross. Why? It doesn't make any sense. What kind of God died for his creation? Why did God gave up so much? Why did God have to suffer if it's God? The answer is because he loves us. That is why when you look into Jesus' ministry, um, his miracle can be categorized as a four different kind. Number one, Jesus was sinless. Number two, Jesus had power over sickness. Everywhere he go, he healed the sick, whether that people had physical illness or, illness or whether that was, person was oppressed from the evil spirit, Jesus has, has healed the sickness. And Jesus had power over nature. Jesus has calmed the storm. Jesus walked on water. It proved that Jesus wasn't a merely a miracle worker. He had power over nature. And lastly, Jesus has power over death. We actually went over this in our Friday night Bible study. But when you think about it, those four areas, are the, exactly the area that where the suffering came from. Everybody suffers and in pain because of result of our sin. We suffer because of sickness. We suffer because of natural disaster. And ultimately, we're going to suffer because we're going to die. But Jesus has given us a solution for all this the problem in our life. That, that's why we, we call him a true savior. Somebody could actually save in all areas of our life.
But someone might still say, okay, I understand that Jesus came and did work on those area, you know, where we suffer. But how come Jesus didn't completely solve all the pain and suffering then? Because even today, we still have people suffering from illness, natural disaster and death. Why not just end everything and destroy all evil when Jesus came 2,000 years ago? Jesus answered this question himself uh, in the Bible. Let me read John 3, uh, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is our, one of our uh, most favorite Bible verse, right? But we don't actually pay a lot of attention to the next verse. But let's read the next verse. It said, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And the word condemn here, the Greek word is called krino, and it means judge. So Jesus did not came here 2,000 years ago to condemn the evil person, to judge, but he came to save. The other verse is more clear. John 12 said, if anyone hears my word and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. So what's the point? Jesus came to save, not to destroy. Jesus came to forgive people's sin and heal them from their sickness, free people from spiritual oppression by evil spirit, and feed the hungry people. But he did not come to condemn or judge. Why? Because of love. Let me play, put it more plainly. Why doesn't God stop all evil today? Another big reason why is because if he might start with you and me. If God were to stop all evil, he could start, start with you and me because we are sinners as well. He could take you out next time you, you try to sin. But God won't do that because Jesus is not here to condemn the world, but the evil man. But he's here to save even the evil man. Jesus said um, the sick person uh, needs the doctor. Healthy person doesn't need a doctor. Therefore, even the evil person that's who, who's doing the evil, who have brought a lot of pain and suffering to others, Jesus also came for that person. So Jesus is being patient with that person. This is what God declared. Ezekiel 33, as I live, declared the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Another Bible verse, 2 Peter 3, 9 said, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some could uh, count slowness, but he is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but, but that all should reach repentance. So once again, this is the reason why God doesn't stop all evil today. He's being patient with us. He could have take all, all of us out because we're all sinners, but he allowed evil to continue so that because there's a chance that evil person, even you and I, will get to hear the gospel and repent and turn to God and be saved. But how long would this suffering and pain continue? How long do we have to wait? The next Bible verse actually answered this question. It said, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heaven will pass away with the roar, and heavenly body will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the work of the, uh, that are done on it will be exposed. So there's going to be a day that every deed is going to be exposed. So we have to remember there's going to be a judgment day. When Jesus uh, returns for the second time, now it is a judgment day. He didn't, uh, he's not going to return to save, but now he's going to set everything right. Second Corinthians says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat to Christ. So that each may may uh, each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So if you have done good, you're gonna get reward. If you have done evil, you're gonna be punished. Hebrew also said, and just it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, now he's going to appear for the second time. And when you realize this whole thing, you know, Habakkuk, 
we uh, read the Bible verse that he cry out to God, God, why is there so much evil? God, why, why don't you stop uh, evil? God, how long should I wait? But after realizing this about God, this is what he finally confessed. And this is the Bible verse of today. So let's read it one more time. So follow along with me, guys. Do the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. The produce of the olive uh, fell, and the field yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there uh, be no herd in the stall. Yet I still rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in, in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. And this is a song, a song with the instrument. So what is Kabaku's conclusion? Why is there so much evil? Because there is love. And God, Habaku realized that, you know, God is good. God is faithful. Therefore, the circumstances doesn't matter anymore. Even though I have nothing, even though there is no fruit, there is no fruit. Circumstances doesn't change. Yet I could still trust God, trust God's goodness. I could still have faith and rejoice in the Lord because of who he is. So my dear um, GSPC student, here's a conclusion I want to tell you. Why did God create the world as it is, where there's so much evil? Because he loves us. This is the only world where love is possible. Why did God not stop all evil today? Because he loves us. He's being patient with us. Why did God die for us? Once again, because he loves us. This is why we call the God of the Bible uh, a loving God. That's the uh, most um, prominent characteristic of God. God is love. Our God is love. And we must remember that one day, Jesus is going to return. And when he does, all our pain and suffering will end. So this is the final word that I like to share. This is the message of Jesus that I like to share with you. This is the, the word of Jesus. This is what he's saying to you. I know I created this world where people have free will, free choices, and for thousands of people are using this free will, will to reject me. And they are using this free will to, to hate me and curse me and betray me. And they have done great evil. But today, if you, Rebecca, if you, David, if you, Eric, if you, Joshua, if you, Sulam, if you, Peter, if you, Estelle, if you, Junhi, if you, Yebam, if you, Susie, if you, Tiffany, if you, Joshua, if you, Ryan, if you, Austin, if you, John, if you, Justin, if you, Diane, if you, Kar Karis, if you, Juyong, if you, Angelina, if you, Ethan, if you, Hannah, if you, Emily, if you, Eric, if, if you, Amy, if you, Yejin, if you, Allison, if you, Jaden, if you, Kyla, if you, Elizabeth, if you, Jason, if you, Sophia, if you choose to, freely choose to love me today, then it was worth it. If you decide to open your heart and decide to love me, this is worth it. Maybe thousands of people is going to, you know, reject me. And there's going to be a great evil. But if you decide to love God today, if you decide to love Jesus today, he's going to say, it is worth it. So if you decide to confess your love to Jesus today, two things going to happen. And I'm going to end the uh, sermon with this. Two things going to happen in your life. Number one, Jesus, you're going to realize that Jesus was always there for you in times of suffering. When you're in time of suffering, you might not realize this, but when you receive Jesus' love, and when you look back, you soon realize Jesus, Jesus was right there next to you, crying for you. 
in knowing this, you get to trust God. You get, you get to realize his great love and goodness. And this fact is going to give you strength to overcome the world. Who cares if you, know, you don't make it to your dream college? Who cares you fail your test? Who cares there's a pain? Who cares there's a sickness? Who cares you're not better than your friend? Who cares you, you have suffering and trial? The creator of the universe, the Lord of Lord, the King of King loves you and he's there for you. This truth will give you a strength to overcome any obstacles in life. And number two, you're going to also realize that Jesus also cries for others who are suffering right now. Many people, I understand there's many evil, there's many suffering, there's many pain. And at this very moment, Jesus is weeping for them. Jesus is crying for them. So Jesus is asking you, my son, now that you're saved, would you take my heart and would you become my hand and feet? And would you go there and share my love to those people who are suffering? That's the heart of Jesus. So two things are going to happen, my friends. You got to realize the love of Jesus and we have to be his hands and feet. This is the calling as a believer that we have to understand Jesus' love. We understand the world is evil. We understand the world is suffering. But the only difference is we understand why there's a suffering. We understand why there's evil. Therefore, we take this message and go to people who are suffering and we share the love of God. We share the, the message of, of salvation so that other people can, can rejoice as well. Other people can also find out the love of God. This is your calling, my dear GSPC students. So I bless everyone to receive and live out our calling in God. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Father God, we look around the world and we see so much pain and we see so much suffering. We, we see so much evil. But Father God, we understand why they're suffering because of love, because you choose to love us, because you want a genuine love, therefore there is evil. And there, there, because of our own wickedness, because of our own sin, there is so much evil. But you are being patient with us. You could have finished all evil today. You could have just finished all of us today. But because you love us, you're being patient with us. And because you love us, you choose to come down and die for us to solve all our problems, Father God. Therefore, help us understand this love and help us decide today to love you back. And Father God, we confess that we want to become your hand and feet and carry out your goodness to others who are suffering, Father God. Please uh, help our students take this purpose, take this calling in their heart and become your hand and feet in the world. Help, help them live out a life that, that fulfills your, uh, your calling, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for, for being a God of love. We today confess we love you as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we will have responsive praise and offering. You can either mail your offering to the address provided, which is PO Box 2950, Chino Hills, California 91709, or you can complete it online through the website on the screen. Please select the offering to the Education Department.
Okay, guys, let's try to remember today's message and hear the voice of Jesus. And uh, do your offering and, and also offer your heart to God. You know, God loves us so much that he has done everything to us. He has given up so much for us. The only thing we could do is accept that love and decide to love Jesus um, as he, he first has loved us. So uh, if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart yet, if you haven't confessed that you love Jesus yet, go ahead and take a moment. If your heart is willing, once again, you have free will to receive or reject. If your heart is willing, open your heart to Jesus and accept his love. And for those of you who have already accepted Jesus' love into your heart, pray to God that you're going to now take the heart of Jesus and reach out to the person who are suffering, and you're going to become Jesus' hand and feet and share the love of Jesus. Let's pray together, guys. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all here together on this beautiful Sunday to worship you and praise you. I pray that during this time we give back to you with the little that we have and we give it to you with our whole heart, knowing how much you gave to us. Thank you for blessing us with this technology so we may be able to meet in your name. And please give us the desire to always live like you and to remember that you're the almighty God and to put our faith in you and accept the love of Jesus in our hearts. Help us to apply Pastor Christian's sermon to our everyday lives and give us the strength of the Holy Spirit to get through the week. Please watch over us and to never forget to be thankful for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Next are for today's announcements. Friday night Bible study will be on the 22nd at 8 p.m. and you can join through our website. If you're interested in joining a ministry team, please fill out the application, which can be found on our Instagram group chats and on our website. 
The teams include worship team, welcoming, student outreach, media, and activity planning. Please message uh, Teacher JTS, Tiffany, or myself for any additional information. Um, also, we are currently having a logo contest for Overflow Ministry. Our theme verse is from Psalm 23, 5, and it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The winner's logo will be used for high school items and wears for 2021, and it will be due on January 31st. The first place prize is a $75 gift card, second place is $50, and third place is $25. Let me just add something to this um, announcement. So, guys, this is your chance to participate and uh, make a real difference. I realized that Overflow Ministry has been here for a long time. Um, we don't have a set logo. So you go ahead and design your uh, logo and submit to us. Um, it could be uh, only a picture or it could be all letters. It's up to you. And it could contain the word GSPC high school. or It doesn't have to be. It could just say overflow ministry. So uh, you have a lot of freedom to design your own logo. Uh, so please participate. Let me show you something. I have a um, come up with my own logo. And here's the reason why. If nobody uh, turns in the logo, then um, I'm going to just go ahead and decide to use uh, this one. Let's see. So this is the logo that I come up with. You guys like it? Overflow. So if you could think that you could do a better job than me, and you don't want this to show up on your next retreat t-shirt, then please participate, okay? Because uh, if nobody else participates, I'm just gonna go with this logo. So uh, this, you don't need a special skill. There's a lot of apps out there that could design logo. But here's what I would recommend. Um, pray before you start and, and read the Bible verse, theme Bible verse, and pray to God to give you a, a good idea to represent who we are as a, as a community, who we are as a ministry, who we are as a, as a church, and then uh, design your logo. And then I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see all your designs. So please, please participate. There's going to be a great reward. The prize is there in the screen. So um, once again, uh, we're going to wait for the great result, okay? Also, please keep our church and leaders in prayer on resuming in-person services. And lastly, right after service, we will have Bible study through uh, the breakout groups in this call. Please join us in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.